Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 45 of the Geography GCSE countdown and today we are looking at the processes in glacial environments. So let's get going. What actually is a glacial environment? During the last ice age, snow and ice covered much of the landscape. Huge temperatures barely rose above freezing, even in the summer. Huge, valley, huge valleys radiated from the north and the west and carved deep valleys and troughs. Further south and east, the land was permanently frozen by some meltwater rivers. Weathering processes in glacial erosion. The main weathering processes in a cold environment is freeze-thaw weathering. The amount of liquid is limited due to, due to the freezing temperatures. But in summer, water flows into the cracks and freezes hard the following year. There is freezing and thawing that takes place every day of the year, but the most intense freezing is seasonal. Freeze-thaw is an important process in glacial environments because it helps to shape the jagged glacial mountain landscapes. Rocks become weakened by freeze-thaw, making it easier for them to be eroded by glaciers. And large piles of angular rocks called scree collect at the foot of mountains. And these become really powerful erosional tools when trapped under a moving glacier. So the processes of glacial erosion. Glaciers usually move very slowly, only a few centimetres a year. But they, <clears throat> but they are responsible for a huge amount of landscape erosion. There are two main types of glacial erosion, abrasion and plucking. Let's think about abrasion. Abrasion is the sandpaper effect caused by the rocks within the ice scouring the valley floor. Abrasion leaves a smooth polished surface. Scratches called striations caused by larger rocks beneath the ice can also often be seen. And then second, plucking. Plucking is where meltwater beneath the glacier freezes and bonds the base of the glacier to the rocky surface below like a glue. As the glacier moves, any loose fragments of this rock will be plucked away with it, like extracting teeth, for example. This process of plucking leads behind a jaggedy rock surface. But how do glaciers move? In the summer, meltwater lubricates the glacier, enabling it to just slide downhill. This type of movement, which could be quite sudden, is called basal slip. In hollows high up on the valley sides, this movement may be more curved, in which case it is called rotational slip. So if it's stuck against the back wall and it moves, it probably doesn't move straight, it probably moves and spins slightly depending on the direction of the glacier. That's why it's called rotational slip. In the winter, however, the glacier becomes frozen to the rocky surface. The sheer weight of the ice and the influence of gravity causes individual ice crystals to, shape, to change shape in a plastic-like way. This process is called internal deformation and also causes the glacier to move downhill, but very slowly. So how do glaciers transport material? Rock fragments from freeze-thaw and, and eroded by the ice can be transported by the glacier. This sediment, called moraine, can be transported on the ice, in the ice buried by snow and snowfall, and below the ice. As, as the glacier moves forward, it pushes this loose debris ahead of it, effectively transporting it downhill. Not surprisingly, this process is called bulldozing. But what causes deposition? Deposition occurs when the ice melts. As most melting occurs at the front, the snout of the glacier, this is where most deposition takes place. As a glacier slowly retreats, it leaves behind a bed of broken rock fragments called till. Due to the lack of water transport, till is poorly sorted with jagged rock fragments of different sizes. Till is also known as boulder clay. Ahead of the glacier, meltwater rivers will carry sediment away. The process of attrition will cause the rock fragments to become smaller and more rounded. We learned about this a couple of days ago when we were thinking about coastal landscapes and river landscapes. 
This sediment is well sorted with rocks deposited close to the ice and finer material carried kilometres away. This sandy and gravelly material is called outwash. So this is the end of this video. I do hope it has been useful. Um, I know glaciers are a difficult topic. Um, I'm lucky that I did them for A-level and so I know a lot about them. I also did them during my degree and I actually love glaciers. It's I find it really interesting of the three like coastal rivers or glass, glacial landscapes. I find glaciers the most interesting and I hope that influences you as well um, to make it seem slightly more interesting to you. So please do subscribe down below. It really does help me out and I will see you tomorrow morning for another one. Bye guys. Thank you.